Hey guys, today we are going to be analyzing episode 15 of season 4, Glaciator 2, also known as one of my favorite episodes this season, as well as diving into all of my theories that I took away from this episode, and all the moments in which are foreshadowing huge things to come this season. But as always, before we get into today's video, be sure to subscribe so you never miss the tea on the show you love. Now, let's get into it. Now, I just wanted to clarify before I begin that this video was filmed before the trailer of Ephemeral was released, so if anything I mentioned happened to have already been confirmed or not, that's why. So the episode begins with us encountering both Ladybug and Cat Noir in the middle of a fight with Glaciator, all because they had been announced couple of the year, to which Ladybug by no surprise strongly disagreed with and evoked in this episode as she even went to throw Cat Noir in the trash trash can and you guys i genuinely felt so bad for him during this scene and so soon after the battle we see adrian delete all of his ladybug photos as he'd made a promise to ladybug that somehow some way he would move on from her and marinette even forced alia to remove all of her lady nora photos hence why we see nadia later on announce that they've all been deleted from the lady blog now later that day we see adrian at fencing to which he's performing poorly Lian, which comes to a surprise to Kagami considering she's not used to seeing one defeat Adrian besides herself. Nonetheless, this easily. And as she goes to ask him, if something's wrong, let me help you. To Adrian, we hear him respond with, nobody can help me, Kagami. And this was yet again another reason why I was so glad to have seen Luca find out both Ladybug and Cat Noir's identity in Wishmaker, because not only can he help the two come closer and closer together, as he already in a way has. But also keep in mind, this is episode 15 of season 4, meaning it comes just before Haxon, which likely explains why we saw scenes such as the ending scene, and Marinette just trying to be as supportive as possible, but also means this comes just after Senti Bubbler. And speaking about the episode Senti Bubbler, it had been revealed after Thomas had attended a fan conference that the episode Senti Bubbler was planned to have a one hour long runtime, along with other details he'd mentioned relating to other episodes, such as Cat Blanc originally meaning to be in season two, Ephemeral will be a what if episode, the aggressed kitchen was needed for the upcoming episode Gabriel Aggress, however it didn't end up working out so they hoped to include it in season five, and the studio originally working on episode five of this season, Psychomedian, went bankrupt, ultimately a affecting it and likely being why it's yet to air. And so considering Senti Bubbler's initial script had a runtime of one hour, it makes me wonder what else more there was to have added to the episode, and whether or not we will or have yet to see what those extra pieces would have been. I'm also curious and excited as to why seeing the aggressed kitchen seems to be such a staple piece to the point that they're hoping to at least have it be shown somewhere in the series. It makes me wonder why it's so important to see. And so going back to Glaciator 2, after Adrian leaves, he begins to cry in the car, and this broke my heart. But what shocked me even more was to actually see Gabriel and or Shadow Moth create an Akuma unintentionally for Adrian. In one of my latest videos, I talked all about my theory for episode 22, and how Adrian would be the one to be Akumatized in that episode. And while many assumed after seeing Gabriel being a D Decent father for once, confirmed that Gabriel would definitely never akumatize his son in the form of him being Adrian and himself being aware of that, I actually had felt this scene only proved the theory to be even more possible and was foreshadowing for what's to come. Not only has Gabriel akumatized Adrian before, but he even took advantage of his emotions and we know that Gabriel does trust Ladybug in the sense to be there to save Adrian. So 
overall, I can't see why he wouldn't do it again. And you guys, I got so excited when I saw this scene in which Marinette hands over a hamster to Adrian as his gift. But of course, as soon as I saw those pink bubbles appear in the background and Marinette say I love you, I knew it was just her imagining things. And so we end up seeing Kagami call over Marinette at the park to let her know she's concerned for Adrian, to which she goes to mention how Marinette is the only one who can actually make him happy again, and that to do so, she's going to have to train and change her ways to confess to him. Again, just as this season has proven time and time again, the chances of Marinette confessing her feelings to Adrian this season are huge. Not to mention, she not only had the support from her friends since the very beginning, but now, more than ever, both Luca and Kagami are there rooting for the two. Now, the interesting part about this whole Marinette training to confess her feelings is that the one risky part about it all was that not only could the person in which she practiced with not have feelings for her from the beginning, but she also didn't intend for them to have any for her afterwards either. And so of course, who's better to call than the person that stumbled upon her at the perfect time? Cat Noir. Now this had to be one of my favorite parts of this episode and just this season so far in general, as seeing Cat Noir laugh and mimic Marinette the way he did as she was trying to practice was just the cutest thing and the facial expressions were just hilarious. Plus, we not only got to see them later on head over to the movies, but we even got a Mary Shat umbrella scene. I for one was not expecting that to happen this episode, let alone ever. And in Miraculous, the rain can symbolize growth, cleansing, and more specifically, in this case, a step in the right direction in terms of the love square. Because as we later go to see Andre spot the two of them with one another, he goes to say, that's impossible, Ladybug and Cat Noir are made for each other. I know it. And it's true. Ladybug and Cat Noir are truly made for one another, just as Marinette and Adrian are. I feel like many have believed for the love square and progression overall to proceed, there'd have to be a love square flip where Marinette specifically directed her feelings to Cat Noir, losing all that she had for Adrian, and Adrian discontinuing the ones he had for Ladybug and strictly focusing on Marinette. But in reality, as the end card of this episode even goes to symbolize, what's important is that the two of them, Cat Noir and Marinette, love both aspects of one another, not just one over the other. As Andre even goes to say, what the heart has forgotten, the ice cream remembers. Hence why the ice creams play such a huge role in foreshadowing the direction in which their emotions are heading. But of course, that isn't to say there won't be more Mary Shat and Ladrian moments to come in the future. And Speaking about the ice creams, while we hadn't gotten the chance to see what Adrian's new ice cream would have been this season, do keep in mind that in Wishmaker, we did see Marinette's. And now seeing how Andre had been keeping a close eye on Cat Noir and Marinette's, it makes even more sense as to why her new ice cream now contains the flavors it does. And so of course, Andre does end up being reaccumatized due to Ladybug forgetting to give him a magical charm earlier on in the episode Episode, and overall, this battle was so wholesome, and seeing the way both Ladybug and Cat Noir were talking with one another just made me so happy. Also, can we talk about how cool Ladybug's lucky charm was? This battle was just amazing. And now, the final Mary Shat balcony scene of this episode was just everything. Seeing Marinette not only truly speak from the heart, but Cat Noir's reaction and the both of them telling one another that whoever it is they're in love with is genuinely lucky, my heart. And so the following day, we see Marinette attend one of Adrian's fencing matches to which we see Kagami grab Marinette and pull her into the locker room where she goes to ask her if she did what she had told her to, and seeing Kagami give Marinette advice that came from her manga was just the sweetest thing. And about mangas, whilst we know Mark and Nathaniel have continued to work on theirs, it does make me wonder if we'd ever see Kagami pitch in. Considering back in episode 2 of this season, Lies, we were introduced to another secret talent of hers. 
drawing. But as always, what do you guys think? Today, Glaciator 2 is officially available in the English dub. But as always, be sure to let me know your thoughts and theories down below and subscribe so you never miss the tea on the show you love. And I'll see you guys in the next one.